Yeah, Lamar, huh? no, for real, that way. Huh? Lamar Cruz, or as he's known online, Lil Mar, is a rapper, content creator. Today we're going to be talking about Lil Mar. Lil Mar is a YouTuber, a rapper, a TikToker. One such aspiring rapper is Lil Mar. Today I'm going to be talking about all the bad things that I've done. And the reason I put quotes around bad is because not all of this stuff is wrong to me, in my opinion. Lil Mar and another grown man were basically... 14 year old girl in a walmart parking lot i'm not trying to justify these things because some stuff you know i understand where you guys are coming from if you don't know the whole like the full story of everything probably never even gonna get to see the baby anyways because she's only 14. The standards aren't high she just gotta be young number two abandoning the homeless girl I told her that i had a place for her to live because she was homeless i just decided to take her and leave her at this house people are not gonna forget about this stuff so i can't just like hide from it i'm not trying to so i'm just gonna like tell my side of the story on everything basically what do you think of what do you think of all this shenanigans that there is my best friend in the whole wide world if you're like me you may browse tiktok every so often for a quick laugh or a brief bit of entertainment or you may be a more avid user of the platform and find yourself as a dedicated fan towards the many creators that the website has to offer i'm sure we'd all like to live in a world where every creator we see is great and loves rainbows and kittens and all that fun jazz and stuff but unfortunately we don't live in that reality and with our character of interest today we are going to be proven that that is quite literally the opposite of what is going on. Meet Lamar Luis Cruz, a 23-year-old TikTok SoundCloud rapper from Columbus, South Carolina, who currently lives in Seattle, Washington, with a bit of a rap sheet and an immense lack of morality. Aside from his lyrically genius music, got so many females I could fill a bus, but baby, you the pizza, and they the crust. Okie dokie. Mr. Cruz can be found being an absolute deplorable member of society and broadcasting it for the world over on TikTok. From reckless driving and endangering anyone around him on the interstate for clout to essentially kidnapping a homeless woman, taking her an hour away from where she lives and dropping her off at an abandoned home after exploiting her. Abandoning the homeless girl. I told her that I had a place for her to live because she was homeless. I just decided to take her and leave her at this house with no phone. Keeping a ledger of supposed victims with times and dates of when he made them victims, which is really, really weird. Right down to the slippery slope of endangering a minor for his own sick and twisted intentions, to proudly wearing his crimes like a badge of honor. The story of Lamar Luis Cruz, aka Little Mar, is infuriating, and that is being generous. Especially given just how bad the legal system let down a victim of his, and essentially just gave him a slap on the wrist with all things considered. Oh yeah, did I also forget to mention that he is banned from Canada? Not many people can say that they are banned from a literal country because they're just that much of a deplorable person. There's going to be a lot more on that later. Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Wonder. It is super phenomenal to have you here today. I sincerely want to say thank you for stopping by today's video. I know there's a lot of videos out there in the recommended, so thanks for choosing this one. If you're new here, I currently upload a deep dive once every other week and I upload them on Wednesdays at 11 p.m. So if you find that you enjoy today's video and the type of content that I'm presenting here. You can definitely find a lot more of it here on the channel. So if you find that you enjoyed today's video, feel free to drop a like and subscribe down below with that bell notification on so you never miss out on yours truly. Feel free to leave a comment down below telling me what you liked or what you didn't like so I can work harder to make this a better viewing experience for you in the future. Also, I just want to say I first came across this story from the creators listed on screen. So if you enjoyed today's video, feel free to go check them out afterwards as they do a lot of content similar to what I do over here on the channel. But with that out of the way, once more, my name's Wonder and let's get right into the story of Lamar Luis Cruz, Little Mar, aka TikTok's most egocentric predator out there. I put like the top 10 reasons. So we're gonna start with the most simplest one. Number one, uh, driving recklessly. I mean, I like to drive it fast. Like uh, who doesn't? So I don't understand how y'all guys try to say I'm driving recklessly, especially because- As a person who lives in a pretty big city and is held up by constant construction and numerous people playing guardrail tag, I'm already not fond of people who drive their cars in such idiotic ways because owning a vehicle is quite a privilege and I don't like seeing people misuse that privilege. So I find myself very irate watching 
watching the sky break every traffic law known to man. Little Mar is the proud owner of a galaxy-wrapped Corvette, which looks reminiscent of the outdated galaxy-themed shirts worn by middle schoolers. Perhaps this is because he has a target audience, because it looks like a 12-year-old asked Santa for his favorite car from GTA 5. Sure, many people would love to drive fast. I can't knock the human spirit for wanting to go vroom every now and then. But perhaps just because you own a fast car doesn't mean you should repeatedly go over a hundred miles per hour, fail to use blinkers at every turn to notify the people around you where you intend to go while filming it all one-handed for TikTok. I feel most car enthusiasts and, well, people in general would just kind of sum that up to being a self-centered menace to society. I'm aware of the self-explanatory nature as to why this is bad, but I still have some thoughts I want to share. First, though, I want to play a clip of his remarkable driving skills. I put, like, the top 10 reasons, so we're going to start with the most simplest one, number one. Uh, driving recklessly. Okay, so like, <laughs> I really shouldn't even have to explain this, but as most of y'all know, like, whenever I buy, yes, buy a new car, uh, I mean, I like to drive it fast. Like, who doesn't? And uh, occasionally, like, I'll weave through traffic in my Durango. You know, I, I do that in like every car. I, I've been driving for five now, five years now. I do consider myself to be a, a experienced enough driver, and um, I've never had an accident before either. So I don't understand how y'all guys try to. I wish I could say that I haven't seen this trend before, but unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there who like to post such stupid actions over on TikTok, pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis for a little bit of internet fame. Perhaps the human desire to go 120 on the freeway outweighs the potential of ending one or more people's lives. Why you would purposely incriminate yourself like this over on TikTok is honestly beyond me. Now, I'm sure there's people out there who will say, okay, well, it's not that bad. You didn't hit anybody. All it takes to make this situation do a 180 is a blind spot, somebody merging, a brief lapse of judgment, someone just honestly to God doesn't see him because they're going a normal speed and this dude comes zooming out of nowhere. It's really stupid to do. I'm not going to rain too much further on this subject because again, like I said, it's very self-explanatory. I just wanted to start off a little bit of the icing on the cake to explain just how self-centered and careless this individual really is. Also how moronic he is. He's not, he's not really that bright and it doesn't surprise me to see this type of behavior translate into every other aspect of his life. Life. But with that out of the way, we have a lot more to get through, and it only gets worse from here. Also, my light died, so we're in dark mode. Number two, abandoning the homeless girl. Most of y'all know about this. It went kind of viral. For this next chapter, I want to go over an incident that occurred a little while ago where Lil Mar fired up the last remaining brain cells he has to concoct one of the worst TikTok songs I have ever seen online. Lil Mar awoke one morning with birds chirping in the meadow and he said to himself, Hey, what if I found a homeless woman, promised her that if she had course with me, I would give her a place to stay, and then afterwards drive her to an abandoned house an hour away across state lines with no phone, and left her there for views. Surely this isn't a truly sickening exploitation of a vulnerable member of society for clout, right? Yeah, it's it's about as disgusting as it sounds. It's quite literally one of those things that are it's so bad, you can't even make up how bad it is. It's just there's so many layers of bad that you cannot lie about this type of thing. Now, I'm unaware of the exact date and time as to when this occurred, but I believe chronologically it took place a little bit early into Lil Mar's career online. We start off with Luis after he picks up this woman and drives her about an hour away from where he lives. This comes after his proposition of relations for a place to stay, which quite frankly is really sh to do to someone who is struggling and living on the streets. Like the creepy is, he takes a picture of this woman while she sleeps, followed by the caption of, she's asleep, I should push her onto the highway. I don't know where else to leave her at. I feel like throwing up, it was that bad. Oh my God, it hurts my head just a little bit. With the location of Ridgeway, South Carolina, we can estimate via Google Maps that at a minimum, he drove this woman 25 miles outside of town. And in his apology clip, I'm led to believe he kept driving further because he states that he took this woman an hour outside of state lines. Additionally, I just kind of want to comment on how you can speak about another human being like this. You already exploited a homeless woman for your own sick and twisted gains, knowing that you're not going to give her a place to stay at all. And then you turn around and you're just so devoid of human emotion that you look at this person and speak of them as if they are just some sort of trash you leave on the side of the road. As we progress further in the story of Little Mar, his complete lack of empathy towards human life is going to become more and more of a glaring 
attribute to his character. The next clip is of Luis dropping this woman off at an abandoned house. He told her that he left his keys in the car, hopped in the vehicle, and then drove off. However, that wasn't enough for him. No, no, no. He had to make this woman who was already having a horrible time feel even worse because he he got a can of Febreze, drove back over to where the woman was at, and began to spray down the car, insulting her body odor, quoting aloud that it smells like fish. You can just wait here, I'll go get it. Not really. Drive, drive, drive. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> she really thought she was gonna be able to live with me. Stupid, dumb. <laughs> Car smelling like god fish, no ridiculous, bro. That was the worst ever. Shortly after this incident, Lil Mar thankfully got some backlash, though it surely wasn't enough because he's still active to this day, where he took to his story to state a response concerning the incident. Not for real though, I do feel bad for her because she's homeless and I basically left her stranded in a whole other state without a phone. But at the end of the day, my body count is 31, and that's all that matters, right? No, I think what matters is the safety of the homeless woman you exploited took across state lines and then left her in an area that she has never been familiar with without a way to communicate with anyone she may potentially know. I think that I think that might be the pressing matter. It's potentially life-threatening at worst and negligent at best. Also, it's so insulting to say you feel bad for her when you just went out of your way to make her life hell for no reason. Now, after further backlash, Prince Charming over here uploaded what he thought was an apology video to address the entire situation. So I'll let that play for you now. Number two, abandoning the homeless girl. Most of y'all know about this. It went kind of viral. Uh, basically, I picked up the girl in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is an hour away, hour and a half away from Columbia, South Carolina. And I had told her that I had a place for her to live because she was homeless. And I really didn't think it through, honestly, because um, I didn't know, like, I didn't have like a plan really. I just decided to take her and leave her at this house, which was a little bit I'll admit, but the, the thing is, the house that I left her at, it wasn't actually like an abandoned, it was an abandoned house, but it wasn't in the middle of nowhere. Like it was literally in the same neighborhood that my friend Huff lives in. And I live four minutes away from Huff. So um, she was literally right down the street. That's why uh, when she walked to the park, and once I found out that she was at that park, I drove like two or three minutes and uh, went and saw her. And she was doing okay. Like she met some new friends and all that. And uh, I know it was kind of a thing to do to leave her in a whole nother state but what y'all don't understand is that her mother lives in hopkins which is like 20 minutes from south from columbia it's literally closer uh to columbia than charlotte so like the thing is she didn't have anybody like her her whole family her mom her brothers she didn't have anybody so it didn't make a difference which state she was in she was going to be homeless regardless it's not like her family lived in charlotte they live closer to columbia they just didn't you know they just she really had nobody in her life, and it's sad, but there, I mean, some of y'all thought it was funny. I mean, it wasn't supposed to really be funny, but it was just, you know, I, I just be wilding sometimes. But uh, at, the thing is, though, she's doing she's doing pretty good now. She has a job uh, at Waffle House. I'm not going to say which location, but she, she does have a job, and I, I know she's not, like, homeless. Excuse me there. Um... That's not an apology. I love where he says he didn't think it through because that really sums up the intellectual capacity of Lil Mar. A catatonic dog on life support probably could have thought this through a little better. Also, a clarification, he said he picked her up in Charlotte, North Carolina, and then drove her to where he lives in Columbus, South Carolina. Uh, basically, I picked up the girl in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is an hour away hour and a half away from Columbia, South Carolina. And that it was an hour and a half away from where she was living, which according to Google Maps, that is about a hundred miles away from where she was at. Also, he says it's not that big of a deal because while he did leave her at an abandoned house, she was only four minutes away from his friend Huff's house. It was an abandoned house, but it wasn't in the middle of nowhere. Like it was literally in the same neighborhood that my friend Huff lives in. And I live four minutes away from Huff, so um, she was literally right down the street. That's great and all that she's four minutes away from Huff's house. I was honestly a little worried. You know, I wasn't sure if that was going to be a, a factor or not here. But I think the, the small pressing problem is, oh, I don't know. It's that she's 100 miles away from where she lives. He also tops it off by saying everything ended well because she wandered off and made some friends in the park when he went to do a little bit of a wellness 
check to drive around to see where she was at. Uh, when she walked to the park, and once I found out that she was at that park, I drove like two or three minutes, and she was doing okay. Like, she met some new friends and all that. Because playing with human lives is just like a f Disney movie for Lil Mar, I guess. This next section is where things begin to sour even further, and I'm sure you're probably scratching your head like, how does it get worse from here? I am so glad you hypothetically asked. You see, Lil Mar has an issue with projection, and this is represented well by his desire to start rumors that he is in fact a predator for clout, which is always such a convenient excuse for these types of characters. To an absolute deplorable paper trail, let's begin our analysis through an Instagram post he made that really kicked off this rumor. Plus, I'm probably never Never going to get to see the baby anyways because she's only 14 and it's up to the parents whether they want to press charges or not it was really stupid of me but i posted on my page later on because i was i was trolling for clout and it actually worked because i gained a lot of followers off of this i posted and i was like she's 14 i'm i'm not even gonna be able to see my baby because i i was telling y'all that she was pregnant and so like i got a lot of clout off of that so then i decided to push it further and tell y'all she was underage so that I could go viral and it was pretty stupid I mean I started a rumor about myself now I believe this particular instance as disgusting as it is to even pretend this type of thing I think that this part is fake just due to the fact that I would hope there is no parent on this planet who would weigh their options on whether to press charges or not towards someone who did this to their 14 year old daughter so I'm just gonna assume that this really was just some sort of screwed up rumor that he thought was humorous to himself which makes this next bit of information all that more unfortunately ironic because a few months later Luis Cruz and Randall Huff were arrested in 2019 on charges of being a 14 year old in a Walmart parking lot which god it it makes me so mad that there are people out there especially when you get two groups of people together like it one's already bad enough but you're able to find someone equally as awful to you and you guys just sit together and you're thinking hey what if we just destroyed the innocence and trust of a 14 year old who at who did nothing to deserve this yeah gold star for you real benefit to society i guess little mar's reaction was of course to blame the victim and say that the minor had said that they were actually older so it's really on them which will never ever be a good excuse for two grown adults who should have easily known better but where it gets even worse is the fact that after taking a plea deal he only served four months yeah basically i did four months so you guys remember when i caught that charge in 2019 now obviously i i had to take a plea deal uh, i'm not gonna talk about that because you know there's no legal to defense for that charge, so I had no other choice but to take a plea deal. Four entire months for destroying and completely changing the trajectory of a life of a 14 year old is what the judicial system found to be fit for this man. What could he have possibly been like, oh yeah, just the big information, you're gonna want this. Did he give them tips and tricks on how to become TikTok famous? Like, are you, like, what is the actual possible explanation that this man would ever get a plea deal? It's such an open shut thing. Like, did you do this? We caught you doing it? All right, sick. Good by but no 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 they decided that this four months should really set him straight yeah i'm sure the victim's family and the victim himself are so pleased to know that a life-altering crime resulted in a simple slap on the wrist for a genuine menace to society i want you to really think about this in its entirety that the authorities have the opportunity to lock away a reckless driver someone who preys upon and exploits a homeless woman and someone who endangers minors and is proud of it and instead they gave him four months and sent him on his way if that doesn't make you mad i just i really don't know what would upon getting released from prison little mar decided that he was going to use the arrest as a way to forge his true identity as a predator something he was more than happy to embrace and wherever he went online he wore this like a badge of honor No, for real, <laughs> that way. As you guys know, I've been gone for about four whole months. I'm pretty sure all of you know by now that I was in prison. I'm itching to explain how Little Mar was banned from Canada because it just baffles me that an entire country said hell no to this guy. But first, I want to show you a series of disturbing posts, messages, and interactions strewn about his social medias that further proves he just does not care, and he is glad to admit that he is attracted to minors at every possible turn he can. Social media platforms that might I add are still very active to this day. First up is a ledger of 
Little Mars relationships that he posted online. And if this is to be true and accurate, it holds some very alarming information. More alarming than the fact that he has actual dates listed in this ledger, which is just so creepy. If we take a closer look, we'll see that a large portion of these names are minors. According to his list, there are nine minors he has endangered, some more than once, and this is at his own admission. I'm also less inclined to believe his stories that these are just elaborate rumors because he's already been arrested for this type of crime, and he's already shown just how far he's willing to go to get whatever he wants. I honestly can't say that a normal functioning member of society would really be making ledgers about minors that they've been with. I just don't think that that's a normal thing to do. The following Instagram post was made during a time where there was a rumor going about that the rapper Little Tay had passed away, and Little Mar had this to say about it. No, I've been waiting years for her to turn 18. You can also find another Instagram interaction where he's asking of Little Tay's age, where he says, how old is she? Please say 18. Which is just blatantly disgusting to see how many people will openly admit their attraction to minors. Also, not to be crude, but why the hell does he all of a sudden care about the age of consent? His further lack of intended admission of liking minors is further proved when he disagreed with a user who was bringing light information on a new Instagram update that would kind of restrict teenagers and adults from talking to one another. It would just make it like a little more strict and Little Mar didn't really like that. Little Mar said that such a feature was quote unquote bogus with 134 people dropping a like to support this. Also, I forgot about this one. Backtracking to his posts about Little Tay, he left this one up on his story. Rest in peace, beautiful. I've been heartbroken all day long. I'm just going to leave this little bit of information up on screen. Yep. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, but wait, there is so much more. Another user on TikTok allegedly catfished Lil Mar, pretending to be a 17-year-old girl and tried to see if he would actually be down to meet up in person, which he actually did. And it's a little hard to claim it's anyone other than himself because he rolled up in that eyesore of a vehicle. Let's take a watch. This guy's in the Galaxy Corvette. Come out more and talk about why you were gonna. You're trying to meet a 17 year old girl? You're trying to meet a 17 year old girl? You're trying to meet a 17 year old girl at a park, Mar? That's kind of weird, Mar. That's kind of weird, Mar. What were you doing at the park trying to meet a 17 year old, Mar? His phobia of the age of consent really shines through in an interaction he had with another user over on Instagram regarding one user's age. It reads as such. Isn't she 12? To which Lil Mar says, nah, I wish, she's 20. And here he is on a post that says, essay offenders in my area, where he's asking, where am I at though? Because it's all just some big silly game to be convicted for one of the most disgusting crimes imaginable. Well, let's take a peek at his Twitter and see if he has any hot takes or views over there as well. I'll Alrighty, we've got, why do the cute girls always have to be so young? Followed by this deplorable tweet, my standards aren't high, she's just gotta be young. This is an active user who is still currently allowed to be on these social media platforms. And it, what it blows my mind because you could be just on Twitter alone and call someone a stinky head and you would get like the FBI at your door hand delivering you a banned notification. Again, I'm so aware that I am sounding redundant at this point, but what the actual hell man? Like even if you think that these are just jokes at the end of the day, who would ever find this funny? Who casually finds this humor to be entertaining. I don't believe that it's all humor. I 100% believe that a lot of this is just him sprinkling in the truth alongside his sick and twisted humor because he's just that much of a disgusting person. He can't take this serious. He doesn't have any understanding as to how this really affects people in the real world. I don't know how a sewer rat like this could just get four months. I mean, he's like a Chris Hansen fever dream. The dude is practically begging to be arrested at this point, yet no one wants to do anything. It's just actually vile behavior. Behavior. But hey, let's read about how we got banned from Canada. Visit Canada, land of beauty and home to countless vanishing wonders. Dating minors is illegal over there too. Damn, we've been detected. Now for the chapter you've been waiting for. How did Little Mar get banned from Canada? Canada's pretty strict and thorough about who they allow into their country. They do background checks, ask you about where you'll be staying, sometimes make phone calls to certain people you claim to be meeting, all to make sure your story lines up with what you're actually telling them. It's pretty standard stuff, but in Canada, I guess they're 
are just built a little different. Little Moir at some point was residing in Seattle, Washington, and it clicked in his head that Canada is only three and a half hours away, and the age of consent is also 16. As we all know the great distances Little Mar will go to ruin lives, this was beginning to look like his next big plan. Over the next few weeks, he took his time to get a passport, get a rental car, and book a hotel from the dates of September 29th to October 1st, a very short period of time in Canada. What stands out to me though is the fact that he listed the hotel room to be for quote, two adults, which obviously you wouldn't have yourself booked down for two adults if you weren't planning on meeting someone there. I've heard rumors that he was allegedly trying to meet a 16 year old in Canada, but I don't have any exact concrete information on that, so take that as you will. During his preparation phase for his trip to Canada, you could see his stories and posts littered with excitement about his upcoming endeavor. However, I think some of his followers and people who just kind of viewed his account and knew a little bit about his history were starting to pick up on why he might be going to to Canada. And this theory is further proved because one user went on to comment under a post regarding the matter, just a reminder that dating minors is illegal over there too. Little Mar brushed this off, simply replying with, damn. Luckily, no matter what his intentions were, Canada wasn't going to be tolerating any of Mr. Cruz's shenanigans. Upon arriving at the border of Canada, TSA agents were quick to detain Lamar Cruz after they ran a background check on him. In fact, I don't want to spoil the story myself, I'll let him tell you exactly what happened through a series of posts. WTF, I just tried to enter Canada. I was handcuffed and refused entry because of my charge. They treated me like a criminal and told me I would never be allowed in their country. Yeah, I wonder why they do that. It's unbelievable. I wasted my free rental car and the hotel, which is non-refundable. Now, usually I'd be one to be so hyped and be like, oh my gosh, Lamar took the biggest L of the century here. He got kicked out of Canada. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, I actually have some unfortunate news. It is actually us, you and I, the viewer, who were truly played and truly have received the L of the century. Because according to Lamar, this was all in a lie. Elaborate lie. Yeah, he, he tries to claim shortly after that none of this really took place and that this was all just one big massive prank to make you think that he was really going to go over to Canada with foul intentions, which it's really impressive to see someone go to such great lengths to do a little bit of an internet prank, so much so that they would pay for numerous days at a hotel, which would cost hundreds of dollars and buy a passport, which takes a whole large amount of time in itself and get a rental car set up. It's my bad that I thought that it was actually all real. According to him, he's smarter than all of us, so I guess at the end of the day, we don't stand a chance against such a big brain giga chad like Lamar Cruz. We really got fooled, didn't we? So I've been really like confused on why I cannot get a girlfriend. I just want to hone in one more time and say that after reviewing everything, seeing how he exploited a homeless woman, how he has been arrested for a heinous crime, claims to have had a ledger of numerous other victims, so many deplorable, disgusting acts that this man only received four months from a judicial system. I think it is just a blatant and disgusting insult to anyone who has ever been a victim of this guy. It's such a massive L on behalf of any sort of justice. But at least now you know the information on such a disgusting person roaming around online. With that all concluded, I just want to say thank you so much for watching today's video and for stopping by the channel. If you did enjoy, feel free to drop a like and subscribe down below. And if you want to contact me or see me at all after the video, feel free to check out any of the links listed on the screen as it's a really easy way to reach out and connect. If you can't tell, I'm getting really tired because script wise, this was the longest video I've ever made, topping at 23 pages. So my eyes are burning out of my retinas due to the bright light behind the computer. I'm going to get on out of here once more. My name is Wonder. It's been super phenomenal to have you here. Definitely check out my my Patreon as well. Forgot to throw that out there. This is a really good way to help support the channel. It's going to be the link below. Without further ado, y'all take care. I'll see you in the next one and good night.